News on the Mueller front tonight. George Papadopoulos, the first Trump campaign advisor to be arrested in the investigation, is now heading to jail. But late this afternoon, a federal judge sends the former campaign advisor to what? 14 days. Who gets 14 days for anything? Aboard Air Force One, President Trump sought to distance himself from him. Let's listen. I see Papadopoulos today. He's going to be. I don't know Papadopoulos. I don't know him. I saw him sitting in one picture at a table with me. That's the, that's the only thing I know about him. I don't know. But they got him on, I guess, a couple of lies is what they're saying. I don't know nothing. Anyway, Papadopoulos pled guilty to repeatedly lying to FBI agents. And since the special counsel investigation was actually launched, Mueller has indicted or secured guilty pleas now from 32 people and three companies. That, that's 332 people indicted so far. For more, I'm joined by Julia Ainsley, NBC News national security and justice reporter, and Greg Brower, former uh, U.S. attorney. Both of you know this story. Put this, just give me a sense, Julia, because I've been counting on you to do this. How is this Papadopoulos guy? He's this young guy, 29 years old. We've just pictures him at that meeting. Then the Trump says he never met him, and there he is sitting at the meeting. How does he fit into the Russian whole thing? So he really fits into what kicked this off in the first place. We understand that he had some kind of like drunken conversation with an Australian diplomat, and that could be one of the critical things that kicked off the investigation into this possible you know, conspiracy or collusion. Yes. yes, this in particular, because he was offered dirt from this professor in, US, in uh, the UK, Miss Sood, for dirt on Hillary Clinton. And he apparently went and, and spoke to the Trump campaign. Not only did he offer that, but he also offered a meeting, perhaps, between Trump and Putin. So he was definitely someone who was trying to use these connections as a young person to get ahead in the Trump campaign. But what is not clear is who took the bait, who actually decided to go forward, or Sessions? if anyone did. Was it Sessions Well, we don't himself? know if anyone at all did. What well, I find Sessions fascinating is Sessions was apparently the one who seemed interested in what Papadopoulos was proposing in terms of a hookup with the uh, Russians, and he's also the guy who later recused himself, and that's why Trump's so furious at him. He was the one who stu wanted to stuck his nose into it, and he's also, anyway, on his way to North Dakota today, President Trump once again denied any contact with Russia. Let's listen to the president. There was no, there was no talking to Russia. There was no phone calls. I didn't make phone calls to Russia. I didn't receive phone calls. I didn't have meetings. I didn't have texts. I didn't have any. I have nothing to do with Russia. Nothing to do with Russia. Greg, let me ask you about this sentence. I guess most people wonder about an eight. Well, let me look at this first. However, last week, Papadopoulos' lawyer said Donald Trump had approved of efforts to set up a meeting between Trump and Russian President Putin during the campaign. According to a sentencing memo, the lawyers wrote, Eager to show his value to the campaign, George announced at the meeting that he had connections that could facilitate a foreign policy meeting between Mr. Trump and President Putin. While some in the room rebuffed George's offer, Mr. Trump nodded with approval and deferred to Mr. Sessions, who appeared to like the idea of a hookup and stated that the campaign should look into it. This is pretty close to the bone here. Well, right. that's a sentencing memorandum in which Papadopoulos' lawyers were trying to hopefully get a lighter sentence for him, which they managed to achieve in large part. There's no transcript of that meeting. The attorney general has denied that that's the way it happened. Uh, there's no quote. What did he get for a due sentence? Why did he only get two weeks? Well, I think um, it's twofold. I think the special counsel won with respect to the sentencing because they were asking for some jail time and they got it. I think Papadopoulos won in some respects because he didn't get very much jail time. But I think in large part the judge felt that Papadopoulos was remorseful and also probably didn't completely buy into the government argument that Papadopoulos's misstatements were uh, tended to significantly undermine the investigation. I think that's key here. It's not that it was cooperation in any right. piece. In fact, they canceled the cooperation interview with Papadopoulos because they found out he was talking to reporters. But it seems that the judge thought he was very remorseful. He said he wanted a second chance. And really, the government only asked for 30 days here. That was the sentencing given to Alexander Vanderswan, the lawyer who was also indicted for lying to the FBI in the Mueller probe. So they got about half of that. I know it seems like a lot less when we're talking about Paul Manafort looking at 10 years, but the charges here are very discreet, and then a lot of times the judge says someone wouldn't even go to jail. And right. you may know this more for yeah. lying unless they had a criminal background. But didn't That's his right. lying to the agents uh, allow this uh, agent to escape they were going to try to grab? 
the, the professor. Right. Uh, yeah, and look, from a, f a former prosecutor's perspective, I think everybody who's ever prosecuted a case would like to see someone who lies to agents get more time than mm -hmm. 14 days. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, he did get some time, so that's a win for the mother team. The judge just apparently thought that he didn't deserve more time than that. But uh, just to he's, finish he's this up, a, he, gave, he must have given them something. What did he give them? No, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I don't, don't think, think we know anything. that. I think that he was actually someone who, it seems that the sentencing is not reflective of any cooperation. And the Mueller team actually got pretty frustrated. What they have from Papadopoulos is tons of emails and texts. They know exactly who bit on that bait that he was offering. They don't need Papadopoulos' cooperation to get those answers. And I would also say, Chris, that if, if Papadopoulos', Papadopoulos cooperation was significant and ongoing, you would not have seen a sentencing today. It would have been mm -hmm. postponed, as the Flynn sentencing has okay. been. Thank you very much for the nuance here. I thought two weeks meant nothing, but apparently it means two weeks. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.